Hey there, thanks for joining me today. In case you don't know, I'm Cami from the blog Tidbits at tidbits-cami.com and Mr. Tidbits is with us today, which can only mean one of two things. We're either building something or I just wanted this handsome man beside me. <laughs> okay, both are completely relevant. So why don't you tell them what you built? Well, I uh, built a fireplace mantle surround for our living room. Per Cammy's request. She wanted something that looked European and a bit like the cast stone mantles she was always showing me. Uh, so I sketched it out and designed it with a curved surround opening and some thicker legs that have a subtle curvature to them as well. And the top piece is bigger, deeper at least, than the previous one, so now she has more room for her stuff. <laughs> My stuff. <laughs> We decided to finish it up with some lime wash paint to give it some texture that might be similar to a cast stone piece. Yeah, I do think it turned out really good and I think we need to share a few more details. So hang with us and we'll walk you through the whole process for building my dream fireplace mantle surround. First, an important and exciting disclosure. So this video is sponsored by one of our favorite tool makers and companies to work with, and that's Craig Jig. So they asked for my help to get the word out about their newest platform, which I think is incredibly exciting. So you might already know that Craig Jig makes the most handy dandy tools to make building easier. You love your jigs, don't mm -hmm. you? <laughs> so you definitely make good use of them in this project, I'd say. But Craig also shares tons of building plans and projects which we have contributed to in the past several times. But now they have filled a major gap in the DIY world with their new digital platform for learning called Craig Academy. So I will link in the description to their Foundations of Building series that is geared to beginner and intermediate DIYers and woodworkers. If you would really like um, more confidence and knowledge when it comes to building things, we highly recommend taking a look at Craig Academy and discover how many lessons and topics they include to help you learn how to build just about anything. Now, I think it would make a great gift for someone that wants to learn more about building or even for yourself. So I had Kevin actually take a look at the lessons at Craig Academy because he really is a builder around here. Um, so can you tell us what you thought about the content once you took a look? So yeah, I was impressed with uh, everything they included. I feel like the projects being built will teach some very important basic skills that every builder needs to, to know. Um, I like the skill library where people can learn basic skills like measuring, cutting, joining, joinery, finishing, and all that good stuff that I've mostly had to learn the hard way by just digging in and making all the mistakes first. Yeah, you've made a few mistakes over our 15 years <laughs> building together. But now look what you built. Now, of course, the mantle, but also our house. <laughs> That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> so, you know, I've enjoyed watching you build this mantle and surround. Neither of us knew exactly what we wanted it to look like, but we just started to kind of dig in and think things through after each step, and then we kind of adjusted when needed. And in the end, I think we're both really pleased with how it turned out. So. I took some footage um, while you were putting each step together. So we don't have the exact plans for you today, but my hope is that by seeing this process, you could kind of take the same concepts and then create something that might be um, unique for your space. So that's really what we do with each project that we tackle, which um, I think you can do because you have taught yourself the basics of woodworking and then you just kind of push up your sleeves and give it a try. Anyway, I say all that just to encourage anyone, if they want to build something like this, it's possible and you can make it work for your style. All right, Kev, walk us through. So yeah, first step was removing the uh, wood antique mantle that I put up a few years ago. Yeah, and I should actually mention here, I bought that from a friend, like when we first moved in, the house was even done. And it was pretty thin, but the wood tones were just throwing me off for so long. When we first moved in, I thought I wanted to kind of keep with the French farmhouse style of our last home. But as each space came together, I found that I was leaning more towards like an old world European style 
with lots of organic texture. And so this like focal point in this main room just wasn't working. And ideally I did want genuine stone fireplace and mantle and even cast stone would have been nice, but um, I was not lucky enough to find one in the price that we were willing to pay since they averaged like $4,000. So now this one that we built, would you say it was about 200 mm -hmm. in the end? Of course it's not real stone, but we got the look for a lot less. Yeah, I for one, I'm grateful that you're willing to settle for a little less cost. <laughs> but uh, anyways, continuing with the process, uh, thinking it through was really the hardest part. We took inspiration images and then attempted to sketch up a plan, which we changed a bit as we went on. Um, I had to carefully measure a lot and work with Cami on the depth and curvature we wanted. In the end, I ended up using some one by eight boards that I had for the frame and a two, two by 10 for the top, and then quarter inch sheetrock and some quarter inch particle board for the curved sections. And then when I uh, went to build the legs, I wanted to hide as many screws as I could to make a smoother finish on the outside. Uh, so I used Craig's new pocket hole jig that they have to prep a holes for the final assembly. Um, but to make the curves, I uh, freehand sketched the curve on one board, cut it out, came in, put it on the wall, had Cami look at it, and made a few changes, and then I went and used that as a template to make the other three legs. Um, and same thing for the top curve. Um, and then putting it all together was a cinch with the screw holes already drilled with the Craig jig and I used wood glue to put it final things together. Um, but the top piece I didn't actually install until I had it on the wall because I needed to reach in and be able to attach to the wall with screws into the wall, into the uh, studs in the wall so that it would be uh, firmly attached. And then I placed the top piece on and used uh, my wood nailer to nail the crown to the top piece and used caulk to bring it all together and make sure it was solid. Um, and then after everything was built, I used an all-purpose joint compound and covered all the wood surfaces to give it a smooth, kind of rounded look that Cami was looking for. And, uh, but first I made sure to caulk all the joints so that uh, it wouldn't crack as the wood moved over time and uh, give a great finish. Yep, and to finish it off, I wanted to try what we had what we had already on hand um, to see if I could kind of get that faux stone look that we were hoping for. So I used Pure and Originals Fresco Lime Wash Paint. It's what we had in the kids room. It's the color coffee cream and I thought it would also make for a nice warm white to kind of coordinate and contrast a little bit with the textured Roman clay or the Marrakesh paint that is on the wall. So I've got a video all about the paint if you want to learn more. So Kevin primed and painted on the fresco paint and I was completely happy with the color and texture um, after it was finished. And when we started this project, I knew we couldn't really fake stone and I didn't want to try too hard to make it look aged and distressed like old stone would be. Um, it's what I would really like someday, but I was going to be happy if we could just achieve the same kind of look without making it look fake if that makes any sense. I think it could definitely pull off as a similar look to a cast stone metal piece, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's basically when they make a mold and pour a concrete mixture in it. But again, those started like $2,000, and I don't think we could have actually gotten quite this unique shape that we really seem to love. I love the curves that we added. This room, or even this house, is pretty boxy, so I'm always looking for ways to add some curves to each piece. And I think it goes great with the travertine tiles that you installed inside the faux fireplace. Now we've got this set up to someday be able to put in an electric fireplace or maybe even a wood-burning stove if we wanted to, but for now, I feel like we finally nailed the look we want for this room. I'm excited to decorate the mantle for all the holidays, but now I'm thinking it's also time to get one of those cool fancy frames for our TV. Or would you like to make me one? <laughs> Buying one's fine with me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hey, done deal. <laughs> All right, so I think this wraps up this video. Um, I hope it was inspiring. Babe, I hate signing off. Why don't you do that? Be sure to thank our sponsor. Throw in my cool tagline. Tell them to watch more videos. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well then, thanks for watching and I hope you'll come mm -hmm. back for more inspiration for do-it-yourself living. <laughs>